So we've given you a, a handout of, uh, it's a mixture of um, some of the poems that we're featuring this evening, but first of all we have the uh, lyrics for um, three of the songs, or actually two of the songs that are in the folio, and one song for John Dean, um, John's Gotham Soldier, which was a song that was popular in her time. It wasn't in the folio, but <coughs> we know of the song. So when we first started to devise um, the performance that you'll see this evening, we were trying to think about ways of, of experimenting with Dickinson um, that didn't feel brutal to her poetry, didn't feel sort of butchery in some way, uh, but likewise uh, didn't um, disintegrate uh, the musical element, but enhance both. Uh, so we, this was a very sort of process of improvisation around uh, where we were looking at combining the songs and the poetry together and, and finding points of uh, sonic resonance between those two, uh, whether that was in terms of assonance and dissonance, actual sort of the, the physical construction of the words in both. Uh, or whether that was thematically in terms of um, imagery and um, uh, how emotive a passage was. So um, we started to kind of find where those, where that relationship could form and where it would also dissolve. Mm -hmm. uh, where, where the points where what we want to do is, is, is demonstrate some, some of our understanding of Dickinson's creative process and use the music and the poetry and the imagery in those to explore that creative process, how she would have uh, related her music making to her, uh, to her poetic output. <laughs> so we're going to start by reading some of her fragments, is that the idea? Yes. Mm. So, so the, um, if you just turn to this page here, it's in very sorry about my small writing. writing. Sorry, bizarre. Bizarre. Thank you. So, I don't think so I can we have it. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have a list of the eight poems that will be featuring this evening's performance, and we've chosen all of them because they're independent of the fragment poems. <coughs> Do you want to say something about the kind of moods of these before we start, or do you want to just do that? should just say, okay, go through and... <laughs> because but, okay, one of the things that we think these all embody are different aspects of Dickinson and her moods. And so it's very, they're very moody. Um, they're different moods coming through. So, um, should we going to take this one? No. Yeah. She's a voice person. <laughs> Holding back so, here. Um, Let's start by just thinking about how we can voice these, uh, these little fragments uh, collectively. Um, and one of the easiest ways to do this is we'll just go around the table and we'll take a line each and we'll kind of throw them together. Um, and then what we'll do after we've done is we'll add this song, we'll add this song and we'll kind of deconstruct them. And maybe think about uh, when you get to your line, whatever it is, you can think about the, the taste of it in your mouth, think about the shapes that the line makes. Maybe you bring attention to the breath. Again, in so much of how well, we've, we've kind of explored, there's a kind of restraint of breath in a lot of her uh, poetry, is a sense of holding. So perhaps allow the breath, consider the breath as you're as we speaking. Now we all heard there's a kind of innately built in poet's voice, we all think we should. <laughs> in our best uh, received English. So we want to sort of throw that away a bit, let that go. Can you give us an example of that? Because we're all a bit scared. Of, of how to do it? Yes. Well, not like I just did, number one, <laughs> not in the first, unless you want to. It's a bit an ironic way of taking time. But maybe you could think about, um, uh, so I'm going to use the first time. There comes a warning like a spy. So think about how you would emphasize bits of the, uh, of the word. Think about how you might want to say, there comes a warning, like a spy. Or you can use volume differently. So um, you could use volume, you could 
to start peeling this away, allow the feeling when we could internalize them, as if some on one left could rush it through the spirit. We'll start. We'll start. Yes. <laughs> so we can we can look like it's possible. <laughs> so we'll just take it in turns by you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This way? Yeah. This yeah. Way. Yeah. There comes a woman like a spy. A short of breath of day. And steam it is not a step. And summers are away. Silence is for a green drill. There's a ransom in a voice. But silence is infinity. Himself have not a face. The thought beneath so slight a film is more distinctly seen as laces. Just reveal the surge. Or miss the apodine. The gentian wave leaves her fingers. The maple's loom is red. My departing blossoms. Can't be it, parade. Image of light, adieu. Thanks for the interview. <laughs> <laughs> so long, so short. Preceptor of the whole. Coerve, oh, cardinal. In part, in part. In other words, <coughs> of other myths, your requisition be the prism never held the hues, which only heard and played. Of yellow was the artist's sign. In yellow and yellow hue. Till saffron. In vermilion slid, whose scene could not be shown. The words, the happy say, are paltry melody, but those that silent feel all beautiful. Mm How -hmm. does it change the, the sense of meaning? Uh, <coughs> it's pushing, it's pushing around the edges of the words to create a kind of Actually, the, the, the next round that we do, we're going to try one more round um, like this. And um, it's exactly what Sarah was talking about. So we're going to really push the boundaries. So you can you can use pitch, you can use repetition, you can get stuck on a word, you can suspend it, uh, you can really disrupt the line as much as you want. You don't even have to finish the line. We don't even have to finish no. the line. Um, and I think what will be interesting is we don't need to go in order. So you can choose whatever line you want. You can choose the same line as the person before you. Um, you can choose whatever word or part of this page you want. We'll still go around the table. But we'll still go around the table. Yeah, we'll go the other way. We'll start with Sally. Okay, right. There comes a warning. Like a spy. A short breath of day. A stealing is not a step. And summers are away, 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 away. The silence is all we dread. Silence is infinity. Himself. Have not a face. The thought beneath so slight a film. The maple's woman. The maple's woman right. Is more distinctly seen. Image of light. 
and here my departing blossoms impart depart as laces just reveal the surge it's only her that play poetry melody so long so short the words that happy, 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 happy day. <coughs> yellow, 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 saffron, yellow, saffron, yellow. Obviant. Adieu. Preceptor of the whole world. world. A yellow for the outer sky. Beautiful, that makes the silent feel. There is ransom in a voice. Paltry? Coeval. Cardinal. Whose scene could not be shown. The scene <coughs> held the prison. The gentian weaves her fringes, fingers, fingers. <laughs> In other notes, the words the happy say. And you song, bounce, depart. Depart, depart. But those the silent feel, your requisition are beautiful. The prism never held the hues. The leaves, her fringes, the leaves, the fullness in yellower, 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 yellow, yellow. Great. So, so it's really interesting hearing how up on things that other people are facing and it, it does become like music and like improvisation you know when, when we start listening to particular tessituras and pitch uh, it, it, it brings in different colors and different music and then how emphasis changes i was really struck between the two different rounds but uh, when the first time I mean, who had the maple slew was red the first time it's kind of like Ooh. Like a sort of, a, you know, I see a burning house, kind of Cassandra moment. And then the second, whoever said had the second time, said like an answer to somebody's question, like what colour is it? Oh, the maple skin is red. So the emphasis can, in, in a spoken voice, can so profoundly change the meaning. Um, I also, <coughs> by you, I felt like there was a lot of that last round there that was almost reduced to vowel and consonant. The, the sound of vowels and consonants um, as musical tones. I wonder what would happen if we could all choose a word or a phrase from this, and rather than going around the room, if we could be bold and brave enough to create a kind of cacophonous melee <laughs> of words. Uh, just something that, that sounds nice in your mouth, or something that's interesting, a word that interests you, or a word that sticks out. I wonder if we can try and use, find, just find just a kind of place in, in, in sound making um, to vocalize your word. And maybe in different ways, at different times, give it rhythm, give it pitch and tone. And with no particular order. Mm -hmm. So, what you'll find is that. There may be gaps, and that's fantastic. And then there may be overlap. Um, so it's not so much to do with um, sort of block sound, but more like a, a layering. You find so much in her writing, but what we're, we're doing is exploring it through, through sonic tones. It's like making her poems kind of soluble, and allowing them to sort of carefully disintegrate. <laughs> Find a, find, a, find a nice word or phrase. 
It's interesting too how you want, when you do this, you want something to come back to you as well. Yes. We were talking about this idea of return this morning, mm -hmm. um, looking at an image, <coughs> so a mythic painting by um, Christian called Ariadne, um, resisting the arrival of um, Bacchus. Um, and we were talking about the idea of pushing away towards the heavens, but wanting something to come back to you. Mm -hmm. I think the same thing happened in South, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. like, and when I'm listening, I'm trying to make the patterns return somehow. Mm -hmm. And there's this thing about, um, to actually one of the envelope poems uses the fragment to light and then return. This one here, mm -hmm. sorry, I'm leaving. This, this one here, to light and then return. And there's something about sound in there that we want to return something. Mm -hmm. When we send, when we issue something out, we send it out, we want it to come back mm -hmm. in some time. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That's certainly something that we have used in our own performance. Yeah, yeah. that kind of re repetition of certain musical things, mm -hmm. um, certain images. Yeah. yeah. So stop. Does anybody know? It, it does. Does anyone? It could be anyone. Who's brave? Paltry. Brave. Right. Mm -hmm. Silence. Yes. 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 Yes.
of an aria from Norma by Bellini, which was a uh, practice also very popular in the mid-19th century to take large-scale musical forms like opera and reduce them uh, into a more salon capacity. Uh, we've got Old Lang Syne as well, and uh, Johnny's Gone for Soldier, which is um, a war song, really. It's about a, a young man going away knowledge that he probably might come back. And she was seeing a lot of that through the summer world. So. And she hit well. She could hear it. Yeah. And she certainly knew a lot of young men in her community who went away and came back. And there are a lot of poems where she writes about the loss, the loss of young men. So the next thing we're going to do is take the poetry and the voice lyrics, I believe. <coughs> add the voice, uh, add the song notes to her poetry. You know, I think one of our ideas when we were doing this was that um, you know, people are always Emily Dickinson. It's often written that she's using a single structure, but what may be ignored in the main is that the single structure was also used for the song. Um, so you know, there's every chance that you could look at her, you know, transferring some of the popular song rhythm into her poems as well as the religious song is in. So we like the idea of maybe understanding her lyrics a little bit more clearly or her um, um, poetry a little bit more clearly through allowing the lyrical content of a popular song to enter the poem as well as a more kind of religious structure. Mm -hmm. Is that right? I think what's interesting so in, in, in relation to what we just what we just created is it required a different. I don't know how you felt. I always feel when we do that sort of dissolution of poetry is it requires a different kind of listening from everybody rather than one person reading a poem and everybody dutifully listening. Mm -hmm. Actually, requires a really polyphonic, three D form of listening to each other. And um, and I think again that's the combination of how we listen. How we listen to song, how we listen to poetry, but I want to be kind of be really experimental and think about how we can create work that requires a different form of central engagement. Um, so which, which one do you think? So, Rose Valentine or Tommy? We did Rose Valentine last time. It's nice though, it's also lovely. Yeah, yeah. Rose Valentine. Yeah. So, if you look for the lyrics of the Rose Valentine, it's on the second page of your book. This song was written in the 1830s by Sidney Nelson and Charles Jeffrey, and it's become now Mary Black's record, but it's become part of the canon of the Manson Irish folk song. <coughs> um, <laughs> 
By far the sweetest flower there was the rose of Allendale. Where'er I wandered east or west, who fate began to lower, and solace still was she to me, in sorrow to lonely hour, when tempest lashed our gallant bark, and rent her shivering sail. One maiden form withstood was the rose of Allendale. It was the rose of Allendale. One maiden form withstood the storm. <coughs> and when my fevered lips were pushed on Alfred's burning sand, she whispered her lips of happiness in tales of distant lands. My life had been wilderness, <coughs> unblessed by fortune's gale. Had fate not linked my lot to hers? The rose of Allendale. The rose of Allendale. Had fate not linked my lot to hers? The rose of Allendale. <coughs> So what we thought we'd do is to bring that text into the mix of the page we've had on. So you might want to understand um, a little bit. <laughs> so you have both in front of you. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to go around once again in a circle. But you can choose whatever text you want, so either a word or a line from one of her poems, one of her fragment poems, or a word or a line from a song. And you can also think about pitching it, chords, um, and or should we do it mixed up and not in the table style? So they go around the table, you can pick something from the song or something from the poem. We're just going to do a mashup now. This is that collage mashup yeah. underneath it. <laughs> so a star. Will start? Yeah. Okay, go on. A solid stool sheet to me on Afric's burning sand. From in forum with stood the storm, Mary left her highland cotton. Imminent mm. like a shark. Rent her shivering sail. Noise departing blossoms. One maiden for it stood the storm, by far the sweetest flower there. My life had been a wilderness. The prison never held the keys. The maples loom her shivering sail. Silence is all we dread. Tales of distant lands. This ransom in a voice. And summers are away. And when my fevered lips were parched. She was. <laughs> Of a solace still is she to me. Your requisition of being is more distinctly seen. One maiden for withstood the storm, but silence is infinity. Thanks for the interview. I'm blessed by Hodgson's gale. Tales of distant mountains are beautiful. <coughs> My departing blossoms in sorrow's lonely hour. On efforts burning yellow, yellower, yellow sin. <laughs> and when my fevered lips were parched. Or mists withstood the storm. The moon was fair, the skies were clear. Another mist. <laughs> the moon was fair, the skies were clear. By far the sweetest flower there. Deep heart. I'm blessed by fortune's gale. She whispers her lips. The rose of Allendale. The rose of Allendale. Whose singing could not be sung. The beautiful. In tales of distant lands, the maple's lumen red. As the laces just reveal the surge. Across the rose of Allendale. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> okay. Has 
think that leads my love to her. <laughs> The words the happy say she whispers hopes of happiness. And read her shivering sail. I wandered east to us. Who seemed to be the wilderness. The stealing that is not a spell. But silence is infinity. And summers are away. Preceptor of the whole. Our part of the paltry melody. For the rose of Avondale. Beneath so slight a film. I'll dye my dress. I'll dye it red. Rose of Allendale. <laughs> okay, that's great. So you can see that when we merge the lyrics and when we merge her voice, it comes one voice. It, it's, it's liberating to think that she, she was thinking of her voice in that way, that there was a very fluid exchange, you know, lack of boundaries between, you know, the, the music that she engaged with and her own, her own voice. So, so, so what we're doing is we're encouraging, yes, yes. Yes. so what we're really encouraging to you, you to think about is to, is to imagine other influences and music influences. So, so, so some of these words, you know, in sorrow is like, yeah, there's an awful lot of this kind of melancholy in these popular lyrics, especially the you know, ones from all time and sort of longing. And we think that you can find that in these um, in these fragment poems as well, but they often become they, they, they encapsulate a sense of longing. So that's one of the themes that we all go through. So it's three o'clock. Yeah. So quick break. Quick yeah, break. I think so. Isn't that really? Yeah. And while you're having a little break, I get some water and some tea and coffee or whatever you want. I've just got to put up some projectors and some sheets and some pictures for you. <laughs> as you. When you come back, I'm going to encourage you, well, I'll, I'll, actually I'm going to do well now, really. Um, the themes uh, this evening, um, that we, we sort of split our, our um, performance into four sections. Um, and now you're going to have to tell me what they are. So, okay. so, 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 the, so the arc of the poem everything sort of tracks the 24-hour period, if you like. And it, it's it's a, a series of rotation. So we start performance in, in somewhat of a conventional state. So the music that you hear, the singing that you hear, the imagery that you see will be very much in link with our traditional view of Dickinson. Yeah. And as as you as you experience the performance, we're going to be seeing a, a, a gradual deterioration of convention. So it's going to be starting off quite subtly, but it's going to be moving through into a more disrupted state, both visually and sonically. And so that that is mainly the second section. So the first section is convention. The second section is where we're starting to see some sort of bleeding or some sort of deterioration or destruction. The third section is very much decay. And in a sense, we're looking at decay, but there's a beauty in, in the decay. So if we have a sense of the convention and, and then you know, a moving into something that's a little bit more sort of anarchic, this is the tracking of her day. So she's moving through the convention of the day, her tasks, her obligations, her responsibilities. And as she's moving into, into the evening where her responsibilities are diminishing and her creative being starting to become more empowered and the space where she can actually be herself, it's a sense of being corseted and uncorseted. So she's moving into the evening and, and by the time we get to the third section, this, this is the night time. And throughout the night time, we're all starting to see something that is is particularly um, broken down, broken apart, disrupted, and we, we had we had images of um, you know a lack of regularity at, at its at its you know most basic to you know images around um, instability, epilepsy, some sort of electrical forces, um, various sort of adjunct movement. Um, and, and you'll hear it in the music, and you'll see it in Susie's amazing animation, which uh, which she will be, in that, which she will be doing in real time. <laughs> everything you're seeing visually will be will be working in real time. So there's nothing that's prescribed. Um, 
So, okay. yeah. and, and, then, and then at the end of it, it's almost like the dawn. So she's come through this, this sort of extremely electric, volcanic, creative space. And we're seeing the dawn of a new day and, and almost like an easing back into convention and, and a, a restful period, but so, also a return. So to return to what I'm going to be asking you to do is I'm going to be, I'm going to be asking you to work in a few groups. And I so said basically I'm going to try and get you to work in four groups, um, each with some kind of projection, you know, making some projections with some of the items that you brought and you might add to that as well. So I'm going to have two overhead projectors and somewhere in this room I'm going to hang some bits of cotton and give you torches. So we've got various, you know, it's going to be a bit kind of, some of you, if you're very agile and you can work down on the floor, then um, that could be working with the sheets. And so, I've, so your groups will either be this idea of repetition, sort of like clockwork, the repetition of the day, Emily in her habitual modes, the habits, um, the small habits that you have to keep doing every day. So some of you will be examining that kind of repetition and habit. Some of you will be looking at transition. So that's kind of interrupting the habit. Uh, so it's like which is a bit more kind of shaky. Then another group will be looking at decay, stroke, chaos. So that will be creating images that should investigate the idea more of anarchy, chaos, decay. Uh, this is where <coughs> the idea of how big creative spirit comes in with these powerful ideas. And then block four, oh, sorry, block four, um, group four, would be that kind of resolution. So the idea of, so after all, creating to that sense of calm. So we want to have these four distinct um, kind of emotions, yeah. uh, sort of emotions and kind of actions. So, you know, so you're investigating, using similar materials to each other, investigating kind of different rhythms and different dramas, okay? So you might like to think about whether you want to be repetition, transition, decay, or resolution. <laughs> first tea, coffee. <laughs> first tea, coffee first. Well, I'm going to be struggling. Yeah, I'm going to be struggling.